we've recently released our first ever apparel drop. To be the first to get your swag, go to shop.motiversity.com. That's shop.motiversity.com. Something I wanted to share with you guys I think you might find helpful is this idea about balance and how we're always looking to find that balance in our lives. But I think a few things are important. Number one, acknowledging just how hard it is and how difficult it is to find that balance. It's much easier said than done. Like you guys, I've got babies to raise, babies to feed, uh, bills to pay, food to put on the table, relationships to maintain, businesses to run. It's hard. But what I also found is two keys. Number one is discipline. Apply discipline to take care of yourself. The other one is communication, and this is really important because I found if you get curious and you communicate with people around you like, hey guys, I need some help finding my balance, you'd be surprised how fast people come to help you. You gotta take care of the thing that allows you to do what you do. And that thing is you, so take care of you and find that balance. I've learned this over time. I've learned it through experience. It's taken me a while. It's taken me years, uh, but I have learned the power of intention, the power of purpose, and having real purpose and drive behind your thought process is, you know, when you have that level of intentionality and you have real drive and purpose behind what you do, what you say, how you act, um, on the other side of that, you are slowly defining day by day your legacy. So think about that for a second, right? You think about the legacy, because that's one of the words that can often get lost in any event. Power and purpose, find your intention, let's set it today, and let's fucking go. What are the keys to success? What's your secret to success? Well, there really is no secret. I, I think it's the same basic building blocks and tenets that we all know. Surround yourself with high quality people who believe in the same values and, and principles and philosophies that you do, and not just in business as entrepreneurs, but just as, as human beings. You wanna treat people right, treat them good, make them feel good. Um, think big, think outside of the box, be disruptive with your thoughts, and remember, just because something's never been done before doesn't mean it can't be done, it just means we haven't figured out a pathway on how to get it done, and we will get it done. I always like to say too, it's nice to be important, it's more important to be nice. Uh, now the B side to that is every once in a while you gotta tell somebody to fuck off. As you guys know, football was my dream. My goal was to make it in the NFL and then go on and play in the Super Bowl. And football gave me purpose, especially a time when I needed it, especially here in Hawaii. As a teenager, I was running around here. I was f***ing up all the time. I was getting arrested. So football gave me purpose. That didn't work out for me, but of course, pro wrestling gave me life. But the thing I want to share with you is, sometimes the thing we want most in life is the best thing that never happened. It's like the dreams that don't come true because it sets us on a path and gives us blessings we never otherwise would have anticipated. It's about drive, it's about power. We stay hungry, we devour. And we have some things to fix and we're gonna get there. I'm optimistic, I'm always optimistic. We gotta have faith, we gotta keep putting in the work. And I do believe we're gonna get there. We'll get there. We'll definitely get there. And, and as I always like to say, you guys have heard me say this in the past, look, I don't give a shit what color you are, where you come from, what religion you practice, what you identify as, what your bank account says, what car you drive, where you live, what part of the country you live in, it doesn't matter to me, I don't give a shit. The only thing I care about is whether or not you are a good, hard-working, decent, kind human being who treats other people fairly and you're inclusive because everybody is created equal. And of course, if you're always willing to put in that hard work with your own two hands, I got a saying, as you guys know, it's one of my favorite. It's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. They want to understand what's inside of me, what makes me tick, what's between my rib cage, uh, what's up here between my ears. Well, not a lot up here, but there's a lot going on down here. Um, and we use words like hope and optimism, and I said, yes, I am hopeful and optimistic by nature, but let's underscore tenacity, and you've got to have a passionate burning desire to get after your goals and I believe when you take that kind of action with tenacity and purpose the universe will meet you halfway it might not happen overnight but incrementally with consistency it will happen so get after your goals use tenacity hope and optimism for sure have a productive week now let's go 
What's up, man? Made it back. Another 24 hours down. It's incredible. I'm proud of you for that. And I know you don't want to be here. I get it. That state of mind. It's tough. But I understand that. But don't quit. Because if you quit, you're going to wind up right back where you started. Remember when you started how bad and how desperate you were to be right where you are right now? Yeah, I remember that. You gotta keep that same attitude, man. You gotta keep moving forward. Keep pushing it. Don't allow fear of failure and the, the, the allure, the attractiveness of playing it safe in life to draw you in. You can't get out of life alive. You got to die to leave here. When you're asleep, ladies and gentlemen, you need your dreams. I'm here to tell you that when you're wide awake, you also need your dreams. You must have your goals. You'll never make it as a wandering generality. You must become a meaningful, specific. If you're going to work tomorrow because that's what you did yesterday, you're not going to be as good tomorrow as you were yesterday because now you're two days older and no closer to the goal which you do not have. I'm telling you to keep going when you face opposition. I'm telling you to keep going when you face adversity. I'm telling you to keep going because... Years from now, when you look back, make sure you remember one thing about this moment that you gave everything you had, that you leaned in on those late nights and those early morning wake-ups, the hours upon hours in the books, the preparation, dedication, and the resilience, that you knew who you were and let it manifest and lead you into the future. Hello, you can't get out of life alive. So there's no safe position. You can die in the bleachers or you can die on the field. You might as well come out on the field and have a good time, right? No problem is permanent. Or you start thinking the problem's pervasive because I haven't handled my finances, my whole world's over. Or because my relationship's bad, my whole world's over. Or all this is happening because there's something wrong with me. Your life is bigger than that. People need a new perspective, and you can't do it by just sitting and thinking. You gotta move your body, you gotta change your energy and your focus, because low level of energy, I don't think I'm how smart you are, you're not gonna use all your ability. But if I get you into a higher state of being, mentally, emotionally, physically, then all of a sudden you start remembering who you are and you start coming up with answers that you never even thought were possible before. Doesn't it really astonish you that you are this fantastically complex thing? and that you're doing all of this and you never had any education in how to do it. You never learned, but you're this miracle. It's one of the great wonders of life. You aren't here to simply survive or navigate foreign territory. No, you, you were made for this moment. Most of us have been conditioned not to, to take a risk. People ask me all the time, what does it take to be happy? And I always tell them it's really simple. One word, progress. Progress equals happiness. If you keep growing, you're gonna feel alive. And if you keep growing, you're gonna have more to give. When you find a way out of no way, when you find breath that you don't have, when you find energy that did not exist, when you want this thing as bad as you want to breathe, that's when you find a way. Doesn't take any motivation, any drive in order to stay down there on a low level. But it calls on everything in you, ladies and gentlemen. You have to harness your will to say, I'm going to challenge myself. Sometimes I have to pull myself out of bed and say, come on, let's. Things I know I should do, I don't do. Things I shouldn't do, I do. I found that the biggest enemy you have to deal with is yourself. There's an old African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. If you're willing to endure, to hang in just a little bit longer, give just a little bit more, if you're willing to put all of yourself into the task before you, you may just be amazed at what life gives back.
It doesn't matter how many statues, Oscars they give you, or Emmys, or how much money you have in the bank. We've all seen people have all those things, and I get the phone call because they're depressed, or somebody commits suicide in that area. So it's really an inner game, and I think that's what's missing for us today. Everybody's focusing on the outside world, and hell, there's a lot of things in the outside world you'll never be able to control. You can influence, but you can't control it. This, your mind, your emotions, your body, you have 100% control over what you do with these things, and that's where the game is won. You win the inner game, then you win the outer game. But a lot of people spent their life trying to win the outer game, they won, and they're miserable. We're always worrying. Did I think this over long enough? Did I take enough data into consideration? And if you think it through, you find you never could take enough data into consideration. The data for a decision in any given situation is infinite. So what you do is you go through the motions of thinking out what you will do about this. And then when the time comes to act, you make a snap judgment. It's amazing how often it works. It's necessary that you, you have the mindset that I can do this. You've got to begin to believe and to fortify that belief and feed that belief by listening to tapes, going to seminars and workshops, by challenging yourself, by stretching yourself. Don't get so wrapped up in what happened yesterday that you miss out on the opportunities that are waiting for you today. Remember, whenever one door closes, there is another door waiting for you. So to me, success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. And so many people are focused on success still, which to me is like, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's like success is getting what you want. Fulfillment is living what you're made for. To take the risk of doing what we want, which will work to the extent that we realize that what I want, basically, what I really want is what you want. And I don't know what you want. But I never would have discovered what I'm able to do right now if I wasn't willing to take a chance. And you've got to be willing to do that. You've got to believe in yourself. All right, I want to change the world. I want to make the world a better place. I want to fulfill the promise. I want to make a difference. I want to be different from my own life. I want to be successful. How do you do it? One day, one choice, one minute, one hour, one second, one decision at a time. You want to become a risk taker. You want to raise the bar on yourself. Most people won't do that. See, most people engage in low life living, low risk living. This God said, if you're not willing to risk, you cannot grow. And if you cannot grow, you cannot become your best. And if you cannot become your best, you can't be happy. And if you can't be happy, then what else is there? When you're serious about changing, all of you need to do, you don't have to tell anybody you're changing, just do it. Let your life speak, let your life scream, let your life shout, and let it speak so loud, it will speak volumes and nobody can ignore it. Don't be offended if nobody else believes in you. You believe in you. You start making good choices. You start making good decisions. If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. But by all means, keep moving. It is time for you to show up. It is time for you to show out. And there will be obstacles that you must face. And for each obstacle, it will represent something about you. Your greatest victories, your greatest failures. But nevertheless, you must rise above it. And you must conquer every obstacle that comes your way. Are you strong enough? Are you willing enough? Do you have what it takes to do what's necessary to adapt and overcome? So while you fighting and you clawing to get to the next level, let me tell you something. If you're a person out there buying, trying to buy your way to the top, I want to let you know something, King and Queen. You can't buy a legacy. 
This you must earn. See the big dogs, they won't give you the opportunity. You're gonna have to take, you're gonna have to sleep in your car. You're gonna have to sleep on that floor. You're gonna have to cry them tears. But we're not gonna be cry babies. We're gonna be lions. You know when a lion is injured, when a lion is bleeding, he licks his wounds. And he keeps walking. But the time has come for you to succeed, for you to believe, for you to stand tall, for you to understand that you got a mission. And your mission is not done yet. Today is that day. And when and if tomorrow comes for you, be even more powerful. Be stronger than you've ever been. Rectify in yourself. Believe in yourself. Keep that faith in yourself. Don't let the outside interference stop your growth. Don't let those that doubted you and said that you did not have it hold you back. Don't let the losses keep you down. Because if you're down, how would you understand what it means to get up? What is good about being miserable? Resurrect yourself from the pit of darkness because misery doesn't have the right to control your life, your mind, your abilities, your faith within yourself is all that you need. The steps that you take in your life it's a process within itself. It won't be easy. But you don't deserve easy. Easy is not something that you should be looking for. Embrace all of the challenges that are necessary. But you continue to fight for it. You continue to believe in yourself. When the rest of the world says no to you, you say yes to yourself. You say yes, I believe. You say yes, I can do it. You say yes, nothing can stop me. Let it be known within you. Because no matter what's happening, no matter what's going on around you, you are responsible for what you think within you. Your mind does matter. And if you put the wrong things inside of your mind, the best things won't come out. The best of you won't show up because you allowed everything around you to destroy you, to destroy your dreams. And your dreams are limitless. They never die. There's going to be a lot of things swimming beneath your feet. There's going to be a lot of things that are going to try to drag you down. But you're not in the business to drown. You're in the business to live. Do not starve yourself from the beauty of life. You must have the ability to nourish your mind. You must have the ability to nourish your soul. Are you ready to succeed? Are you prepared to move forward? Make it count. Be productive. Be powerful. And from the bottom of my heart, conduct your business.
today. Listen to me. Listen to me. You have no idea the feeling that I have going through my body right now, man. This is a dream come true. Hey, this is a dream come true, man. Thank you for being loyal. Thank you for growing with me. Thank you for enjoying me. My name is Kev Hart. I love y'all. Sun don't stop for nobody, man. Sun don't fuck stop. Sun gonna be up in the morning regardless. That sun is gonna be up in the morning regardless. Regardless of how I feel and how depressed I am, the sun is gonna shine in the morning. And at nighttime, the moon gonna be there. And you gonna look up, these days gonna keep going by. So do you let the days go by and look up and you done wasted a year doing what? Hard work brings great rewards. This is a reminder of the hard work and dedication that I put into everything that I've done. I'm not content because I know where I came from and I don't ever wanna go back. It was a mental thing. So I had to tap out of that and tap into the real me and put the character to the side. I'm a late bloomer in understanding what hard work brings. It's something that my mom beat down my throat and because of the way she did it, I didn't want to comprehend it. That's what the f this is right now. All right, look, man, wake up. Wake y'all asses up. And not only wake up, but wake up with the mindset of being better than you were last week. What's hard is going, Yo, yesterday, I got nothing from working as hard as I could. Nothing happened from that. I'm gonna do the same thing again today, but I'm gonna try to go harder. That's the hardest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. To get up every day and give 100% and, and be in the same position that you were each day, but mentally know that you're trying and trying and trying. Mm -hmm. There's so much that some people just don't understand they can do. How good was your book? What was the ending to your book if the ending to my book can be so amazing because of all that was done not the money all that was accomplished let me be a spark to show how much how many different you don't have to do just one thing when it's all said and done my book is going to be full of all the shit that Kevin Hart did because I never was content with doing just one two or three alright you got one life and that one life, the goal for us is to live it to the best of our ability from the beginning to what said the end. Why not? Some of you don't even realize you have unfinished business. You need to go back where you left off with a new perspective. Go back to the gym. Go back to the drawing board. Go back to the business. Go back to the relationship. Go back to the burning building. You have unfinished business. All you gotta do is show up with a new game plan and a new perspective. You gotta finish business. You have unfinished business. You got work to do. Perspective is everything. Let's go. I need you to hear me loud and clear. How you see this thing is everything. You cannot change the past, but you can change your perspective about it. You gotta see this thing differently. Stop complaining about the divorce. Stop complaining about the job loss. Stop complaining about the relocation. Your viewpoint is your advantage. Thank you for breaking up with me. Here's what you did. You opened up another opportunity for somebody else to come into my life. Thank you for firing me. You gave me an opportunity to explore entrepreneurship. I'm not bitter, I'm better. Perspective is what changes the game. Everybody wants increase and, and abundance and lifestyle change and new zip codes and new area codes, but you only read once a week and you only work out once or twice a month. And so the, the reason why you don't have what it is that you see, the reason why what's in your head 
is not in your hands, it's not your reality, it's because your perspective opposes your potential. You don't have it because you don't see the value in it. If you believe you've been called to be the difference maker, the game changer, the disruptor, the person that comes into a room and commands the atmosphere. If you believe you've been called to be necessary and not grossly irrelevant, then everything you do, everything you see, everything rises and falls on your perspective, your perception, your viewpoint. How do you see this thing? What happens when your perspective, your perception diametrically opposes your reality? If you are going to give and grow and evolve and attain and become, everything rises and falls on your viewpoint. Show me somebody that hates to work out and I'll show you a man that almost lost his life and the doctor said, if you don't work out, you'll die. One sees it as cumbersome. One sees it as a problem. Another one sees it as a privilege. He sees it as his second chance, his new lease on life, that I have to work out. I get to work out. I get a chance to live a little longer. So one person sees the gym as a prison and another person sees the gym as a passport. One man came within inches of losing his life and another man has never come within a hundred miles of losing his life and he only works out twice a month and somebody else works out four or five times a week. The reason why you only do it once or twice a month is because you don't see the value. Your viewpoint is either your advantage or your assassin. Your viewpoint will either get you going or get you killed. We see a storm, we see rain, and we think depression. We think, I can't do anything. Instead of thinking, grass can't grow without rain. Roses don't bloom without rain. Number one, there's one thing I need you to stop saying, and that is, I should do something. That perspective, that viewpoint, that ideology, that philosophy, that mindset, it's gonna get you bankrupt, I should start this. I should stop that. I should forgive. I should. You don't get what you should. You get what you must have. I must work out X amount of times a week. I must forgive. I must evolve. I must become. I must retain. I must grow. I must live. I must evolve. I must go to the next level. I must live in this type of house. I must drive this type of car. I don't care how bad you think the shoes are that you are wearing, there is another man in this world who will kill to walk a mile in the pair that you wear. Marcus, what does this mean? This means that what you are complaining about, what you hate, what you can't stand, what you want to walk out of, what you want to give up on, there is somebody out there that would die to be in your position. And so here's what I need you to ask yourself. Is this problem an issue or is it an opportunity? Some of you, all you've been waiting for your whole life was an opportunity. What if losing your job was the opportunity? What if the divorce is an opportunity? What if the bankruptcy is an opportunity? What if the one you loved was an opportunity for you to reconnect with somebody and forgive them? I need you to see the bigger picture. I need you to have a little gratitude. You need to learn how to smile. You need to work out. I know you hate the gym. I know you hate to lift weights. I know you hate cardio. I know you don't like drinking water. I know you don't like taking care of your temple. You think it's the hardest thing to do in the world to commit. But there is somebody who's in the grave today. And if they had another opportunity to live, they would enthusiastically with great confidence and courage and consistency do what you hate just to live a little longer. Find the positive, see the bigger picture. Guard your gratitude. The trial, the tribulation, the adversity, the giant is not your assassin. The giant is your opportunity. Are you gonna complain in the face of conflict or are you gonna seize the opportunity? I don't care what it is that you're trying to achieve, 
what you're trying to accomplish, what you're trying to give, how you're trying to evolve, what you are looking to become. Everything rises and falls on your perspective. Stop complaining about the jealousy and the envy and the backbiting and the person that gave up on you and the person that wasn't present and the person that lied to you and the person that attempted to manipulate and control. I'm not weary, I'm wiser. I'm not toxic, I'm triumphant. I see this thing differently. This season that you've entered into did not come to break you. It came to build you and to the man or woman God has destined you to be. Change your perspective. There's a reason why they say, see the light at the end of the tunnel. If you don't see that light, you're gonna lose your mind. You will lose yourself. You will snap in half if you don't see past this. The challenge for many of us is that we got to see past our present pain and into the fruitfulness of the future. The right perspective makes the impossible possible. You cannot change the past, but you can always change your perspective. No problem could be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. The severity of your problems is a matter of perspective. Change your perspective and most of them become insignificant. Some of them will no longer exist as problems, but opportunities. The right perspective is the instrument you need, the tool you need. It's a discipline, it's an advantage. If you change the way you look at things, then the things that you see will change. Knowledge, a speech, a motivational moment will not sustain you unless you put it into perspective. How will you see the rest of your day? Because how you see the rest of your day will oftentimes determine the way you see the rest of your life. Shift your perspective. If you can change your perspective, you can change the future. Many of you listening to me right now, you have unfinished business and you need to go back to that dream, back to that idea. You have a date with destiny. You have unfinished business. It's time for you to go back to the drawing board with a new perspective. It's your viewpoint and watch this. Your perspective actually shapes your language and your language shapes your world. And so if you don't start thinking right, you're not going to talk right. And if you're not talking right, you're not going to experience the world that you see in your head. I don't know who God has called you to become, but what I can tell you is if you keep seeing it the way you have seen it, you will never become it. Everybody wants next level. Everybody wants wealth and influence and everybody wants to be this esoteric novelty. But listen to me, you will never experience any of this showing up in your next season with the same viewpoint. The right perspective makes the impossible possible. Why does it matter where I go? I got a scholarship, Dad. This, this is what I actually want to do with my life. You're not going to that Jelly, Julie, or whatever the f the name. Juilliard is one of the best battle. Life does not stop until they put you in the ground, my friend. You have to keep working and pushing everything that you have to get to where you want in life. Whatever. And when I say everything you have, I mean every ounce of strength that you have inside. It doesn't necessarily mean physical, but the mental and the spiritual. Those are the things that's gonna make you better. Those are the things that's gonna make you stronger. You need these things. It's essential. It's essential to your existence. 
So you know one of your biggest problems is that you keep thinking that there is another you. And for me, I started to accomplish more than I ever have in my life when I realized that there is nobody like me and there is nobody that can do what I can do. You have to come to the resolve today, now, that you don't need anyone's permission to make your dream a reality. And it may not always go the way you want, but at the end of the day, you have to understand that there's a reason for you. And there's a reason why things happen. Once those things have been figured out, now you're going to move on to purpose. Purpose has already been written. It has a bottom line to it. There is no, was this supposed to happen? There was no coincidence attached to it. It was meant to be. It is going to happen no matter what you think, no matter what I think, no matter how any of us feel in this world. Purpose has already been made. See, we're not supposed to tuck our dreams in on the pillow when we get up in the morning. We're not supposed to leave them at home and go and fulfill somebody else's dream. We're not supposed to do that. That's not what we're wired to do. That's not who we are. Your human spirit doesn't care about the economy. The human spirit doesn't care that my son's father went to prison. My, the human spirit doesn't care what's happened to your family. The human spirit doesn't care about the past. You may have been molested or your family may have been broke or, or you may have been betrayed or you may have a divorce. Your human spirit doesn't care about any of that. Your human spirit simply says, what's our command for tomorrow every room you walk into you show up and you show out and you leave it all on the table remember your passions when you don't see a light at the end of your tunnel you got to remember the light that is burning inside of you that nobody is able to put out there is not a person on this planet that can stop you I know there are a lot of people out there that always seem that they want to go back or saying that they have to get back to something. The goal is, is to move forward. Don't ever get yourself in a position where you feel you have to always go back or saying that you have to get back to doing what you used to do or getting back to what you had before or whatever. The goal is to move forward. The best thing you can do is try your very best not to fall off track. There are three types of people in this world. There are people who watch things happen. There are people who wonder what happened. And there are people who make things happen. You got to determine which person you are. You can make a wish or you can make it happen. You must first believe that you can, that you will, that you must. When you are no longer willing to tolerate being in the room of failure, then that's when you're going to break free. See, either you don't want to be as great as you really are, and you're trying to dim your light so that others won't feel insecure about themselves in your presence. And so you keep playing at 79 watts when you know you're supposed to shine at 159 watts. And you keep checking the temperature of the room to see what the room can handle versus just giving the room you and letting them, if, the, if your light's too bright, then let them put on some shades. Can you give yourself permission to live in the duality of your imperfections and your smallness and what you're learning and what you still have to learn and your greatness and your brilliance and your light? Can you allow them to coexist and then serve them up to the world? To love you, to see you, to inhale you, to judge you, to leave you, to love you. Some of us are just as afraid of being loved as we are to be left. Get up, work hard, put some effort into what you want out of life because all you have is you. All you have is what you have inside. Don't wait for somebody to tell you what to do. You know what you need to do. Get out there and get it done because that's ultimately what it's going to take. You have to have the courage, the will, and everything you have inside to get to the level and beyond the level you want to be. There was enough fire inside of you. After everything you have been through, you've got to be able to see your value. Others have failed. Others have gone. Others have missed their moment. You must accept this truth that you were born for such a time as this. And that at this very moment, all you have 
is all you need. Between reason and purpose, there is you. You have to be willing to understand that you have to work day in and day out and be the best human being, the best person you can be. And through it all, the good and the bad, you have to stand strong. You have to understand that there is a significant balance to all of us as long as we are in this world. But you got to do the very best you can to get through it and to be strong, and to be productive and be as successful as you can possibly be. Your greatest fear is not that you will fall. Your greatest fear is that you will live a full life and never fly. That you never leaped. You're not afraid of dying. You're afraid of dying before the world sees who you really are. Before they really get your fingerprint. Before they really feel your breath. Before they really feel you. That's what you don't want to happen. You don't want to leave this place without us knowing you were here. How did you dream before you got hurt? I want you to start thinking about all the memories that you wanted to build. The stories that you wanted to tell. But for many of you, defeat has traumatized you. And it has left an image in your head. And this is why you won't go after it. I want you to erase the face of defeat and embrace the process. None of us are going to be here for long. Sooner or later, you got to leave this planet. But make the best of the life that you have on this day and the day after. So if tomorrow comes for you, tomorrow gonna come for me, let's get out there and make the best of it. Because tomorrow is another day. And if you're a part of that day, it means you got work to do. There is no one like you in all of the earth. There is no one that can do what you can do. You are the only option. You are the only play. Nobody else is going to be able to do this. And so we're all waiting for perfect. It's an illusion that will never come to you and it's an excuse to never show up and play. Your story is not meant to be your fortress. Your story is meant to be your fuel. Get out there, work. No matter where you are, no matter what you do, no matter what's going on in your life, you still have a chance. Make it count for something. Get it done and conduct your business. What are you waiting for? I want to remind you that you started this journey for a reason. No one's coming to fucking save you. This is you versus you. Get out of bed. We got goals to achieve and nobody's coming to hold your hand. Truth is, your excuses are bullshit. You just gotta step into your fucking power. Nobody can make that change for you. It's gotta come from you. But it's time to grind. So keep pushing forward. You owe it to yourself to keep going. I'm gonna utilize every minute of every goddamn day to the fullest so I can achieve my goals and live up to my true potential. The only person who's here to help you is the person you see in that mirror. This is the hardest grind you're ever gonna have to do in your life. And it's a continuous thing. You are powerful, you are relentless, you are enough. You just gotta step into your fucking power. Time. That shit scares the fuck out of me. And it's because it's always fading. Do I have enough? Am I wasting it? Should I be working harder? Have I been utilizing it properly? All of these questions are running through my mind on a continual basis because I feel like I'm running out of time. It's the only thing I can't get back. You see, money will come and go. I can get money back. I'm not worried about that. 
When it comes down to emotions, I'm gonna deal with pain, I'm gonna deal with happiness, I'm gonna deal with anger, being anxious, depression, and more. But I'm always worried about time. And it's because I know it is ever fading. It's one of the reasons why I embraced my motto, live full, die empty. I made an active choice to start spending and living every single day to the fucking fullest so when I die, I can die with no regrets. You see, I want to leave a legacy when I die. I want to be remembered forever. And playing it safe, acting like everybody else, ain't gonna fucking get me there. I'm not gonna be one of the people laying on my fucking deathbed, looking back at my life, wishing I did more. I'm not going to be somebody who looks back in my life and regrets that I never took action. So I'm going to utilize every minute of every goddamn day to the fullest so I can achieve my goals and live up to my true potential. Yes, it terrifies me that I could just be gone from this world tomorrow like that. Embrace the time you have on this planet because it could be gone tomorrow. What are you waiting for? You keep looking around, breathing heavy, listening to that alarm, beep, beep, beep. News flash, homie. No one's coming to fucking save you. This is you versus you. I know that voice in the back of your head is telling you that another five minutes of sleep is okay. What's resting another day gonna do? But it's time to grind. Get out of bed. We got goals to achieve. And nobody's coming to hold your hand. The only person who's here to help you is the person you see in that mirror. You gotta rely on them. And you gotta block out that voice that tells you you can't do it. This is the hardest grind you're ever gonna have to do in your life. Step into your power and slay the day. Here's the truth. I don't know the secret to staying motivated so you can achieve your dreams. I don't. I'm sorry if you thought that I did, but I don't. I'm just like you. I'll wake up in the morning and the last thing I wanna do is get out of bed and start working. The last thing I wanna do is put on my shoes and go to the gym. The last thing I want to do is start pushing towards the goals that I set earlier that year. I'm fucking exhausted. I just want a break. So I get it. I know where you're coming from. That voice is hard to cut off and I deal with it as well. But there's just something in me that keeps me going. You see, there will be days where I feel emotionally beaten, anxious as f and in my own head. There's days where I feel so filled with emotion, all I want to do is quit, telling myself every excuse in the book that it is okay to quit. But I just can't find that in myself to do it. And it's because my heart and my soul just scream at me to stop making fucking excuses. At the end of the day, I gotta hold myself to that standard. So I don't complain to nobody. And I realize that I have the power. The gym isn't a fucking option. It's just part of my day. Getting up and getting work done, going to work, is not a f***ing option. It's just ingrained in my life. But you're gonna have to flip that switch yourself. You gotta look internally. Nobody can make that change for you. It's gotta come from you. Giving up isn't going to do anything for you. You owe it to yourself to keep going. So keep pushing forward. 
don't give up. There's a reason why you started this journey in the first place. I want you to think about that right now. Why did you begin? Why did you take that first step in the first place? You got that thought? Are you thinking about that goal? Now realize that if you give up, you are spitting on that goal. You are actively choosing to give up on the things that you would like to achieve. I understand it's hard, but life is meant to test you. It's supposed to push you to your breaking point. Because diamonds are only formed through immense pressure. The number one variable of growing your business in this room that is practical, achievable, doable, is how serious you take making content on the internet. No matter what your excuse is, I promise you, social media is not broken in that story. You're the one that's broken. I know what's happening with the 20 year olds that everybody makes fun of who are picking up incredible market share from a lot of you because they're actually being seen on social. They may not know business yet. And you love making fun of them for that. I got bad news for you. That, they'll figure out. People make fun of things until they don't. Success is the beginning of the end. The ROI, I like to say, of a basketball is billions of dollars for LeBron James. It's zero for me. How one plays with the tools is the variable of success. And so, we can get into the mindset, very much the intro, which was lovely, thank you, and in depth. I, I do believe that the far majority of what is the opportunity in this room or the limitation sits in two very simple categories. One's uncomfortably black and white, and one is remarkably gray. This is very clear. If you're sitting in the crowd and you're not doing this work, it's only two things, and they're both interesting. One is audacity. You're audacious that what you did in 1993, or 2001, or 2007 is enough for you to dominate 2022, or you've lost your ambition, which is okay. I don't think it's a bad thing that you're not as hungry. Maybe you've scratched your itch. Maybe you do want to do other parts in your life, but don't lie to yourself and understand yourself on where you are in your journey. If you want to sell things, it's a good idea to make it easier for people to buy from you. And so the innovation is the mindset. The innovation is going home now and deciding what you just saw in this talk and saying, is he right or is he wrong? And if you find yourself saying, he's right, but I don't want to, I really mean this, that's okay. But then you have to be honest with yourself of where you are in your career, whether that means maybe doing something else because you don't have fire for it, or being content which is fun, a beautiful thing if you're content, but you have to be aware that this is all happening around you. One of the great things about COVID is it breaks your patterns. When you're able to make it to the other side of a war or a pandemic or a challenging time in one's life, it gave you time to kind of slow down. You know, the reality is, is that life is about understanding the alternative. It's really hard to complain about what milk was put in your Starbucks when you came from dirt. So the number one variable of growing your business is how serious you take making content on the internet. Either you're good at it or you're not. No different than basketball. We need to have a very big conversation in the business world about how much kindness compassion, empathy are the superpowers of business. Actual kindness means giving without expectation. 
and I believe in business, what is very clear to me is people think kindness and they use kindness, but what it really is is a slight version of manipulation. You're doing something with thinking something else is gonna happen. You're referring because you think you're gonna, I, and it's all good. It's nice to maybe think, but don't confuse that with kindness. That's called strategy. Don't say you're kind. Say you're throwing out reels and trying to hope it returns. Own what it actually is. I was at a conference like this many years ago and I had just invested in Uber. So I'm giving my talk and I finally throw it out there and as you can imagine, the room wasn't thrilled with me. But it was a discussion and all I saw that was why it wasn't gonna work. And all of the answers were regulation. Gary, this is not gonna work because we're gonna pay the politicians off. Similar to how I hear car dealerships and car people talk about Tesla or direct to consumer. I promise you, when technology is coming along, hoping for regulation is always going to be a bad strategy. Why do I bring that up right now? Because I want you to do the 50 hours of homework so you can innovate. What blows my mind is people's inability to put in the work in the face of information. All of you know that this blockchain thing is brewing. You've definitely heard about Bitcoin at this point. You've probably maybe heard of Ethereum. It's happening and it's gonna affect this industry soonest. This is the book industry for the internet. The blockchain is contracts. Please understand that. Please, it's a very important thing. Please spend 15 hours Googling Ethereum and smart contracts. Get educated, not to play defense, but to play offense. You do 15 to 30 hours of homework, you might just change your career. You might shift slightly in what you're doing now to something else. It's a remarkable time, and one thing I know about an immigrant-centric reality is it's not scared to put in the work. And I really know this statement. It likes to pick which work it wants to do. People don't like change. And change is the only guarantee. What the blockchain eventually will do is change the face of what brokerages, leverages in the ecosystem. Right now is the time to build your personal brand on the internet, and I mean right now. How you do that can be totally different. You don't need to be over the top or curse like me. You need to be you. I'm me, you be you. But what you need to do is start producing content to educate people on who you are. If you're uncomfortable with the way you look and you want, don't wanna be on video, then do audio and do a podcast. If you're not sure that you can handle the camera, then write on LinkedIn or Facebook. If you feel more comfortable being the hostess with the mostest, start a Facebook group regionally within your area. One of the greatest arbitrages in this industry right now is starting a Facebook group for the local area where you sell, around the town, not around selling homes, bringing people in, building community, and then just happening to be the person that's hosting that group and picking up the business. These are the black and white tactics available to you how you build your team and how much empathy you have for the consumer on the other side is the other variable. But the opportunity is staggering. It is staggering. I come here, fly across the country and fly back for one reason, to put so much pressure on this room to do the homework. I mean it. The opportunity is so real. You are literally one viral TikTok video away from selling 13 homes because of it. TikTok's fastest growing demo is 38 to 55 year olds. You can still think it's 12 year olds. It hasn't been 12 year olds for two years. That's the game of no versus the game of yes. That's the game of staying curious. The biggest biggest vulnerability to people in business today trying to sell to human beings is their unbelievable calmness and interest in saying the word no 
and their visceral reaction to the idea of maybe. You should be a monster. Because everyone says, well, you should be harmless. You don't want to be too aggressive. You don't want to be too assertive. You want to take a back seat. No. You should be a monster. And then you should learn how to control it. The definition of being aggressive is forceful and sometimes overly assertive pursuit of one's aims. In combat, almost nothing will happen the way you want it to if you don't force it that way. The enemy, nature, time, there's all kinds of things that, that are going against you. It's a losing battle. And if you don't use force of will, then, then you're not gonna get it done. What it means is, is you need to make things happen. This is the good thing about being aggressive. Sure, there's, there's certain parts of your nature that are aggressive, but it can also be trained. You can start to think with an aggressive mindset, which is I am going to take action. I'm gonna overcome obstacles. I'm gonna push through roadblocks. I'm not gonna take no for an answer. And th those are things that you can train. There's so often times where people, they get told no or they hit an obstacle and it's game over for them. They're just done. They're done training. They're over it. And your attitude, you have to go, okay. Little, little roadblock, cool. How am I gonna get through it? How am I gonna get around it? What I need you to do is evaluate yourself today. Evaluate yourself to see where you are in this race of life. Many of you don't even realize that you've been racing to the finish line. This life is a race. Some of you need to be pushed to start running because you've been walking or you haven't been moving for so long. And you don't even know that you're in a race that all of us are competing to win. But it doesn't matter where you finish. It matters that you run after your goals and your dreams. The way to live is to run after your dreams, to run after your goals, and to run after that finish line. There may be things in your life right now that's holding you back from running, but you have to break through those things. They're there to hinder you, but you can't let it force you to stop running. Chase your dreams, chase your goals. I don't know the situation you're in right now, but the situation that you're in is not your future. It's not who you really are. It's not your full potential. The sky's the limit, but it all starts from within. It's all up to you. You should be a monster. You have to be hungry for greatness. You got to go through it to get to it. You got to understand that there are going to be many circumstances that will require your full undivided attention. You got to go through it to get to it. You have to understand it has to be a unique Mindset. Setting a goal and then going beyond it. Realizing that there's work to be done. Making sure that all of the strings are attached. And make no mistake along the way. Now it's true that we all make mistakes. And we will have many setbacks. But there's always room for a comeback. To understand this, you must realize that you must humble yourself, but yet be hungry enough to go after it with everything inside of you. Everything that is required depends on you. Having the mindset that regardless 
of anything that is around you, that is surrounding you, that is trying to drag you down. You must have the mindset. You must be strong. You must be resilient. You must be driven. And you must be able to take whatever's coming at you. If you stumble, if you fall, have the ability to get up. But you can't depend on just your body to do the work. You must understand that it's the mental fortitude that will get you through it all. So many people don't have this fortitude. They don't have this attitude. They have no faith in themselves. If you, you as the individual, can take the first step, then perhaps many more will follow. There's always gonna be ups and downs in life, man. There's always gonna be bumps in the road. Things that ain't gonna go as planned. Unexpected stuff's gonna happen. You're gonna face some pain. You're gonna face some tough times. And if you ain't trained your mind to be prepared for it and how to handle it, it's gonna break you. The secret is to work on your mindset daily. Work on the way that you see the world. Otherwise, you'll live your whole life seeing the world through someone else's eyes. You'll be a creature of circumstance. You'll be a victim of your life and not the master of it. Read books, listen to audios like this one. Start learning about why you do the things that you shouldn't do and why you don't do the things that you should. It's all because of the way that thing between your ears is white. But know this, you're in control of rewiring it whenever you make the decision to do so. At any moment, you can take control back of your life and start creating the life that you deserve, not a life that someone else has paved out for you. And when all of the struggle comes, all of the bad times, all of the dark times come around, which they inevitably will, you'll be strong enough to take it head on and it will make you rather than break you. You have greatness inside you, let me tell you. Unlimited potential, but you have to train your mind. Every single day, things are gonna happen outside of your control. The weather, terrorism, coronavirus. But you can't control any of that shit. All you can control is how you choose to look at situations. You can control the information that you're letting in here. Never forget that you can have anything in this life that you want if you're willing to go and get it. You've got to have belief. You've got to have belief, and that belief comes from working on your mindset every single day. Remember this. You can be a victim of your life or the master of it. Behind the barbed wire, who can teach me the etiquette? The etiquette for being misunderstood. I war with uneasiness. Everything average makes me sick. Beyond the reach of crowds, what do I do? Do to stop this voice, it never ceases. I wrestle with poetic demons. I speak for the lost and all those going through pain. Every word I say, the sound of a comeback. Testifying of your victory. A witness to your overcoming. Because I am, I am the voice in the flame. Inside the raging furnace, where do I find an apology? An apology befitting of my rebelliousness. I fight the fist of that doubt. How many know what it's like? Like, like to be young, gifted, and crazy Over the walls of resentment Why am I? Why am I so hard for others to accept? Must they slander every corner of my existence? Then let it be as they wish, for I am the voice Every word, the sound of a comeback Testifying to your victory I am a witness to your overcoming Because I am burning I'm the voice in the flame How many know what it's like? Like to be young, gifted, and crazy. I argue with emptiness. You can either sit around and listen to testimonies, or you can become one. Which one you gonna do? Successful people know what they want and why they want it. That's why they are successful. You gotta make a decision. What is it that you want? You can either sit around and listen to testimonies or you could become one I am truth in motion listen here truth is its own gatekeeper 
Nothing can stop what truth sets in motion You gotta stop asking for other people's permission to live your dream It's not the other people that owe you, you owe you Stop begging for what you haven't earned It's time to get up and grind I strum the divine chord And my harmony summons the full manifestation of who I am This is what truth looks like in motion Young, gifted, and burning Successful people Get comfortable being uncomfortable The common person will do anything to do nothing They lazy That's why they sell so many of them lazy boy chairs You can either sit around and listen to testimonies Or you can become one What is it that you want? Sculpted by the blade itself A thousand knives couldn't kill me But now in the darkness, underneath her shadows The warrior discovered himself Shaped from the hammer of pain A thousand betrayals couldn't break me But there in the storm, at the very center of her chaos The champion of me got stronger Truth is the gatekeeper Stop asking the world for permission to live your dream The less we entertain lower level thinking The less we will experience its outcome you can either sit around and listen to testimonies or you could become one. For it is written, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. I can see my dream so clearly now that its manifestation is inevitable. Nothing can stop me. My daddy used to tell me, son, if you're gonna make a mistake, then make it full speed. Some people drown, others go out in a blaze of glory. I'm young, rich, and burned. If a desire burns long enough, it'll grow into an obsession. Whatever becomes an obsession will eventually become a reality. Religion talks about truth, but true awareness demonstrates it. Greatness is in the details. Shape from the hammer of pain. A thousand failures couldn't stop me. Carved out with the razors of suffering. A thousand lies couldn't fool me. For in the moment of trial, beyond the grasp of all hope, I wrote my own story. I dreamed my own dream. I seized the moment. I made the decision to stop asking for permission. But there in the night, above her angry mountains, the seven thunders gave birth to a warrior. Death belongs to the unaware. Those who have awakened know only eternity. I am truth in motion. I strum the divine chord, and my harmony summons the full manifestation of who I am. You can either sit around and listen to testimonies, or you can become one. My thoughts are disciplined and of the highest order. I usher in God's truth with the power of my mind. All the powers in my life that appear to be Now bow to the power that actually is Any illusions that run contrary to the truth Immediately dissolve before my very eyes I am the source Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the world God lives in me Therefore I am whole And I bring that wholeness into every situation I strum the divine chord And my harmony summons the full manifestation of who I am Some talk about truth, that's religion But I demonstrate it, that's power I am truth in motion Nothing can stop me It is written, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk but a power There's no obstacle, no situation No trial or tribulation That can stop my dream from manifesting I didn't just think outside the box I completely destroyed it I close my eyes and project my dream Onto the canvas of the world Until everything that I imagine becomes my reality Circumstances align and conspire to acknowledge truth And I am truth in motion Burning, I am the inner symphony of fire Good is not good enough for me Greatness made me Therefore greatness is in me There is nothing about my creator My maker That is lukewarm That is average Anybody who doesn't believe in my dream Doesn't belong in my life Money comes to me easily Frequently and abundantly In God's perfect way Lack 
sickness, disease, none of them have any place in me. For the Lord didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Let us all close our eyes and starve the illusions and feed our dreams. Fresh water shall pour, pour from the fountain of ambition. There we will recover our lives. Again we shall rule the days. For by facing our fears, the fears of dying, we shall once again discover living. Darkness, ignorance, savagery, all fall from the tree of confusion. Those asleep roam the orchids of struggle while the chosen build their empires. Yet who's strong enough? Strong enough to conquer their own thinking. Who's brave enough? Brave enough to war with failure. Fresh water. Fresh water shall pour. Pour from the altar of immortality. Because we, we are the priests of destiny. The inner symphony of fire. I strum the divine chord. And my harmony summons the full manifestation of who I am. Religion talks about truth. But true awareness demonstrates it. A fully awakened believer is not subject to external circumstances. He's the master of the level of truth that you function at will determine the amount of power that you have over your circumstances. I see not, I believe. I hear not, I believe. I know not, but still, I believe. I starve the illusions and feed my dream. I am truth in motion. Ladies and gentlemen, on the line, getting ready to run today. Life has taught you many things. Without its guidance, you would not be standing here today. It's a shame that most people in this world have dreams that they are not working on because they are afraid. It's a shame. Many people, they waste time. They waste time doubting. They waste time of being afraid of it. They waste time thinking too much about what other people say. It's really a shame. It's a shame that they put down themselves instead of building themselves up. It's a shame. It's a shame that you are let everything around you bring you down to a point to where you can't get up. It's a shame that people look down on you and say that you have had it and that you are over the hill. Tell them this, I've been up the hill many times. My life isn't over yet. Young man, young woman, you have your life to live. You have to breathe that life. How dare you give up on yourself? How dare you give up on your dreams? This is your life. I've been up the hill many times. In fact, I slipped a few times. I didn't even want to get back up because I was too afraid to go up because I felt like the hill was just too steep. But you gotta know, the steeper the climb, the harder the climb. And if it gets tough, you gotta get a little bit tough. So what do you do? You don't keep sliding down. You find a way to get up and climb up. That's what I had to do. That's what you must do. Ladies and gentlemen, lay on your back. Lay on your back. Laying on your back doesn't mean you have to stay on your back. I have been on my back and I've laid down and I have cried many nights, but I wondered how I was going to support my wife and children. I know what it feels like, but I got tired of laying on my back. So I looked up to the heavens and I opened up my eyes. And I kept repeating to myself, if I can look up, I can get up. For every man and woman that is listening to this, 
Let it be known if we are down, you do not have to stay down. Failure only comes when we don't get back up. There is nothing good that's gonna happen when you're on the ground. But you can always make the choice to get up. Rise up with me. Rise up right now. Come on up off that ground. Understand what it means to be alive. We are not just running for the glory of the race. We're not just running just to tell someone we did it. We do it every single day of our lives because we are powerful. We are strong. We can definitely get through the hard times. We can support our families. We can definitely run for those who cannot because we are alive. We're breathing and capable of more than we can ever imagine. And we most definitely conduct our business. It is time for you to stop doubting. It is definitely time for you to stop being afraid. It is time for you to have courage. It takes courage to pursue your dreams. The risk that you take in most cases are the greatest victories of all. I heard about a boy who's 10 years old and he doesn't have much time. This young man is doing all that he can to fight with the life that he has left. And I want you to hear me out. I want you to listen to me. I want you to understand what I'm about to say to you is gonna really get you to thinking about how precious life really is. This child who is fighting an uncurable disease now this disease is terminal. That means that this child will not have the opportunity to come back from it. This disease is affecting him. It is destroying him. But yet this child is still fighting for his life. Now I say fighting because that's what we all have to do. But there are many people in the world that don't have the ability to fight. Sometimes they let the little things hold them back. And they don't realize how unique and special they are inside. So maybe you're not fighting a disease. Maybe you're not fighting something that's gonna take you out of this world. But I'm reflecting back on this young man. This young man that is fighting to live as long as he possibly can. Can you imagine being the mother or the father of this child? This could be your child. This could be my child. But yet, I'm living my life. And my children are healthy. They're strong. Your children may be healthy and strong, but this young man, his parents are preparing him for the final call. So while you're sitting around in misery and wondering why your day is so bad and you're having just such a tough life, you need to reflect on the things that you have happening in your life that is good right now because somebody out there don't have that fight that you have today somebody out there right now is suffering 
I'm not talking about the suffering that you suffering from. I'm not talking about going to the gym. Not that type of suffering. I'm not talking about the addiction that you have of drinking a cup of coffee suffering because you feel that you need it and without your coffee, you can't function. I'm talking about this young man. He would trade places with you if he could. But today, it's not going to happen. In fact, it's not going to happen for the rest of his life. Why? Because he doesn't have much time. How much time do you think you have today? How long do you think you have the opportunity to walk on this earth? This child, this young man will not perhaps see the opportunity to become a man because his life is slowly winding down. So while you're sitting around and wondering how bad your day is, think about the day that you're having today right now and realize that your opportunities that have been given to you are a sign of grace, a sign of goodness, a blessing. Even though this young man doesn't have a lot of time, he is yet fighting for his life. So even if it does seem that this is a bad time for the parents, I say to them, thank you for staying strong even in a time like this that you are dealing with. I say to the parents that can hear me today, whatever your problems, whatever your circumstances, whatever illnesses that you may be around, just know that you are not out of the fight yet. And you must continue the fight. You must continue to go down the path. You must continue to be powerful in your life because it ain't over yet and I haven't heard a bell. So keep living, fight, believe, and trust. And know, just like this young man, that could be you too. Keep up the good fight. When you hear my voice, and you're on that path, and you're running, and you're pushing, take a moment. The moment when you start to feel weak and tired and you want to give up, think about that young man that's still fighting, that's still pushing, that's still believing and knowing that he's not done yet. And if he can fight, you better fight. You better believe. You better keep the faith and you better carry on strong. But just remember, his opportunities are winding down. You have yet to know what yours are. But since we know right now you're not fighting that disease that he's fighting, you fight for him. You fight for those that can't fight anymore. And you keep believing. And you keep pushing. This is a fight for all of our lives. So keep up the good fight. Do you have the courage to grab the dream that picked you? Or will you let it get away? You cannot sit back and wait and wonder because you are seeking the possibilities. You are looking for something that is greater than the excuses that you are giving yourself. This, my friends, is the time, this is the hour, and this is what you must understand within you. Work must be done. Dreams and lifetime opportunities, things that you have never even imagined, this is that time right now. Don't let your dreams become a nightmare. This is when things can go wrong because you waited too long. You hesitated, you procrastinated, you let all of these things just slip past you. 
because you didn't have the mindset to go forward. You were afraid you were going to fail. You were afraid that people were going to talk against you or talk about you. You let someone else determine your destiny. This, my friend, is your opportunity, is your chance, the chance of a lifetime. Don't waste it. Don't put it behind you. Put it directly in front of you and attack and do it with a full heart because this is always and forever be as long as you're living business for those that do not know what they are seeking let me remind you you are seeking victory you are seeking strength you are seeking possibilities you are seeking greatness you are seeking life to everyone on the line, you are the masters of your destiny. So be productive, be powerful, and from the bottom of our heart, conduct your business. Go! Falling down doesn't mean you stay down. You not done. You just living. You're hurting, but you're still living. <laughs> you got some setbacks, but you're still living. You have to think about your past. Maybe that's something that you need to do to remind you of what you're going through right now so that maybe the future may be even better for you. You may come to a point in your life and said, I remember when I did this and I remember when I did that. Remember, it's a memory. It's something that happened in the past. The past can't do nothing for you, but you gotta focus on the right now and hope that your future will be beautiful for you. But even in your future, that doesn't mean that you won't have more unique challenges. Falling down, why? Am I supposed to hurt like this? Am I supposed to go through all of these challenges? Am I supposed to feel all of this agony? Why? What did I do to deserve this? Who did I hurt so bad that I have to go through so much pain? What did I do wrong? The only thing that you're doing right now, ladies and gentlemen, is that you're living. And when you're living, there's gonna be challenges. When you're living, there's gonna be struggles. When you're living, there's gonna be sorrow. When you're living, you're gonna get angry sometimes. But guess what? What good is it if it's not putting you in a position you need to be? You are not a loser. You are a winner. Every time you fall, you don't have to think about it. You have to know that you got to get up. It's not meant to be easy. Let today be the day that you pay your price, that you do what's necessary to push on. The real challenge is performing when you are under pressure. The real challenge is showing up when you don't feel like showing up. There is no getting around confronting your fears. There is no getting around holding yourself accountable. Can we understand that we do matter? Can we understand that there's something that must be done? Despair won't move the needle forward. You can't settle for staying where you are. You are not a victim. You are an overcomer. The world can't control you. You've got to stay focused on your mission. Ask yourself this question. Are my feelings helping me or hindering me? Find your true purpose. Getting knocked down don't mean you stay down. Take a few hits, it's okay. Learn how to take a punch. Learn how to fight back. Learn how to get back. Don't give in to these things. 
that you feel is pushing you down. Getting back up is the mission that you must be focused on. Getting back up is how you understand how tough it was when you was on your back. You can recognize, you can be something great. You can recognize, I know what it feels like to go through something. You can recognize that even if I'm at the top, sometimes I'm gonna stumble and be right back at the bottom. But you don't have to start over. You just gotta learn how to start up and get up. Carry it. Carry those burdens. Carry those struggles. Thicken your skin and know that you got something unique about you because you, my friend, are beautiful inside and no one can take that away from you. Don't let these things hold you down. Don't let the world keep you down because the world didn't do anything to you. You just living in it. I gotta do this. I must do this. I will do this. You got to will it. Will it and then kill it. Kill the sadness. Kill the weakness. Kill the excuses. Kill the pain. And carry on. Be more than less. Be great within yourself. What is it gonna take? What are you gonna believe in? How far are you gonna go? And how are you gonna get up off that ground? So if you don't like being down, master the will to get up. You don't like being in the circumstances you in, and make a difference. Don't just change something, make a difference. It's only when you get up that you can begin to recover from your last fall. See, the longer you stay down, the more time you have to think. And if you think for too long, you will convince yourself that it's too hard to get up, that you don't have the strength to get up, This is why you have to pay attention to your thoughts and revise them when you recognize that they are not aligned with where you desire to go. It's not too hard. There is a solution. You've just got to be determined to find it. And even if you don't have the full plan, even if you don't know what to do beyond getting up, just get up and figure out the rest as you go. And know that your existence is so powerful. Make it count. Don't make it fade away. Evolve into greatness. Carry on. Be productive. Be strong. And from the bottom of my heart, conduct your business. I can because I'm capable. I will because I'm strong. I must because they're dependent on me. Don't you sit here and act like you've reached all your level of success. No, you have not. You have not begun to see the things that's about to happen to you. Never ever, never ever, never, 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 never ever Give up on your dream. Listen to me. That mental picture, never let it die out. Never ever let it die out. I don't care how much time pass. I don't care what happens, circumstances, situations. I don't care what de defeats, what upsets. I don't care what happens in your life. Listen to me and listen to me very carefully. You better never, ever, ever, never, ever give up on your dream. Never let the mental picture, the picture that you painted, listen to me. 
Whatever you saw, whatever you said you were going to accomplish, whatever you said you were going to do, never ever, I know, I know, repetition deepens the impression. Never ever, never ever, ever, never let your dream die. I can't. I can't. Because I can. I will. Because I'm strong. And I can get through any obstacle on my way to my journey. I must, because they count on me. Don't give up. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't go, go pick it back up. There's a dream you left two, three years ago. Somebody told you you couldn't do it, and you internalized that foolishness. Stop listening to the haters. Shut them down. Shut them up. You want to shut your haters up, how do you do it? You do it by being successful. You don't do it by falling into their traps, doing what they want you to do, putting your head down. You don't do it by not being successful. Let me tell you what I learned. Nothing succeeds like success. And so pick your dream back up. Pick your goals back up. Kill a, kill, kill a noise. Shut them down. And surround yourself with people who will help you, who will help you, who will speak life into you and not death. People who will speak life into you and help you to get from where you are to where you want to be. It's your boy E.T. Remember, remember, I don't care nothing about your past. I got one too. Listen to me, you have the opportunity right now to make the rest of your life the best of your life. I must, because it's going to be harder for them to do it if I don't do it. I must, because I got to break that cycle. It's not going to break itself. I must, I must, because they count on me. Listen to me, we're all human, we're all growing. None of us are evil because we're not doing what we said we were going to do. But at some point, you have to embrace, be fruitful, multiply, have dominion, and subdue the world. Let's go, y'all. You have gone too far. You've invested too much time. You've given too much to quit now. You put too much time into it, too much effort. You cried too many tears, right? You've gone, you've gone without eating. You have, you have invested too much to walk away at this point, all right? So we all in, baby. Now it's time to get the reward. It's about momentum. You got to keep it 100. You got to be true to you. And I'm tired of people emailing me, telling me what somebody told them they can't and can't do. Listen to me. The only thing you need to write your book, the only thing you need to do to finish the GED, I'm telling the book now, I'm telling the book. The only thing you need to do to get your four-year degree, the only thing you need to do to get your master's, the only thing you need to do is get your PhD, that is to believe in your dreams and stop listening to others. You're about to get certain things just because of the effort you put in, the time you put in. You're about to get a reward. Are you hearing me? You're about to get a reward, baby. So don't quit, don't give up. There's some blessings that come in life after regulation. They come in overtime. They come in extra innings. So for some of y'all, you're going to have to learn to wrestle with it. You're going to have to learn to fight with it. That's what wrestling means. That's what I'm talking about. You're going to have to put in a little bit more sweat, a little bit more blood, a little bit more tears, but you got to wrestle with it. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Meaning that I'm, we go, we can, we going to do this thing all night long. We're going to do it all night long, but I'm, I'm telling you that I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. But you got you to gotta fight with that thing and tell that thing, you will quit before I quit. You'll give up before I give up. You fight your way through this one, but you do not quit. You do not give up on your merit. Do not quit school. Do not quit on your goal, your dream. You keep going, and not just don't quit. We're not talking about not quitting. We're talking about taking the prize home. Let me tell you something, what hurt people do, hurt people, hurt people. Don't even take it personal. When they try to strip you, they're not stripping you because they don't like you. They're stripping you because somebody stripped them. Hurt people, hurt people. And so I need you to do me a favor. Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever, never, ever let somebody else, their reality for you, become your reality for you, all right? You ain't no boy no more. This ain't no base. This ain't no, I want to go party. You've given up that right when you had kids. Hey, party's over with out of time. Not time to be party no more. Now it's time to create a legacy now. You had your fun. Now get to work. Now build a legacy. 
You don't work for nobody else. You work for your mama, you work for your sister, you work for your aunts, you work for your grandma, you work for your family, you work for your kids. You ain't making no other man rich. You've done some stuff that's so bad that you just put all your dreams down, all your goals down. You've been sleeping, you've been in a state of depression. You, you just, you've given up, you've quit. I need you to, I need you to pick that thing back up. I need you to pick it back up. It's okay. We all made mistakes. It's nobody, listen to me, it's nobody that hasn't made a mistake. You've been forgiven. Now you need to forgive yourself. All right, because you're living in the past. You can't get what's next. You can't get your future because you're stuck in your past. I need you to let it go. Listen to me, no man is an island. You cannot do it alone. You do not have to do it alone. Get some help, all right? Get, get a, I call it accountability partners, a board of advisors. Get the right people around you. Third quarter living is about the point of no return. Hear what I'm telling you? Third quarter living is about the point of no return. Like if you're gonna quit, that's first quarter living, right? Maybe second, I'm not sure. But I know in the third quarter, look, you, you in it too deep. You too far in it, you too deep in it. You better, you heard me say it before, you better get a reward. I behaved like a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things, cut it off, cut it off, cut it off, cut her off. So what, she gonna get at it too, cut her off. So what, but bump your boss, cut your boss off. Your wife needs you, bump your boss. Your boss don't run you. Your boss don't care about your wife and your kids. You care about your wife and kids. Do what you're supposed to do. You ain't no boy no more. You don't need their approval. You talented enough. God made you. You got everything you need. I want you to spend all your energy on overcoming your weaknesses because behind every weakness you overcome is another level of success. And your goal should be the best human when you die that you could be. So your sons and daughters, when they bury you, should say, that's what I want to be like that. I'm going to take this legacy to the next level. When you leave this place, I need you to get in beast mode and stay in beast mode. On three, beast mode. One, two, three. Beast mode. No, come on. One, two, three. Beast mode. Come on, one, two, three. Peace you wake up at 3.30, some other kid's getting up at three and he's got 30, 30 minutes on you today. I need you to do me a huge favor. I need you not only to want to be a beast, I need you to live in beast mode. Because if you live in beast mode, you'll have what other people don't have. Listen to me very closely. Not only will you have what other people don't have, you'll do what other people can't do. So what is it? What is that one thing that you're saying that I am going to get this thing done and I'm gonna make my dreams become a reality? Everyone wants to be a beast until it's time to do a real beast do. Everybody wants to be a beast. Everybody wants to make their dreams become a reality. There's no one sitting in this room who say, I want to procrastinate. I don't want to get it done. I don't want to get to the next level. No, every person in this room, not only do you want your dreams to become a reality, you deserve for your dreams to become a reality. This is important. Seasons are always temporary. Say it. Crisis is not a permanent condition. It's just a season. And the key to life is what you have to do is organize yourself to outlast the season, that's all. As long as you're average, you're gonna get what average people get. When you get to that point where you do exactly what you say you're gonna do, you're gonna get to the next level. But no one can do it for you but you. It's not over until I win. Life has taught me that you will grow through what you go through. Life has taught me that you will grow through what you go through. Life has taught me for every level, there's another devil. Life has taught me the 
depth of your struggle will determine the height of your success. Everybody's got a dream. Everybody's got a goal. Everybody wants something in life. But many of you in this room right now, your beast mode is idle. Your beast mode is not turned on. And when you leave this place, I'm telling you, your life is going to go to a whole nother level if you can learn to turn that switch on and keep that switch on. I outlasted the pain. You're saying, I've got dreams, I have goals, there are things that I want to accomplish, I'm not satisfied. Like, I don't sleep well at night. Like, like E.T., I, I dream it, E.T., I want it, E.T. Let me tell you something. If you get to that point, if you get to that point where you do exactly what you say you're going to do, you're going to get to the next level. As an individual, I need you to get your schedule up. I need you to get your life up. I need you to get your words up. I need you to get your heart up. I need you to get your action up. I need you to get to a place that every single thing that you do is phenomenal so that the life you want to live, you can actually live that life. Everybody wants to be number one. Everybody wants to be the best. Everybody wants to succeed. Everybody wants to have to be and do what they feel they've been called to do. The challenge becomes, most of us, when it's time to do what beasts do, we don't do it. I need you to put this down, put this down, put this down. Because what you're going to discover as you're going towards your dream, as you're going towards your goal, they're going to be, there are going to be so many distractions. There are going to be so many people that are haters, so many people that come up against you, so many obstacles, so many trials, so many tribulations. And when people ask me, E.T., like for real, for real, E., I know you can give me 20 things that you've done to help yourself to become successful. But E.T., I just need like one or two. Can you give me one or two? And one of the things I tell people is, I outlasted the pain. I outlasted the pain. I need you to recycle your pain. When I was sleeping in those abandoned buildings, I kept telling myself, one day you'll be a homeowner. Every time I walked into that abandoned building, I told myself that this might be your current circumstances, but this will not be how the story ends. All you have to do, E.T., is to survive today. When they kicked me out of school, I knew that I would not be a high school dropout for the rest of my life. I knew I got to get through this one day. Me and my mom been through a lot. My mom and I have gone months and almost years of not talking to each other, but every single day I kept telling myself, one day I'll have a, a great relationship with my mom again. One day. Well, I didn't grow up with my biological father. He wasn't into my, in my life until I was 30 years old. But I told myself, today your father is not in your life, but one day. And so every single day when I wake up homeless, one day, Every single day when I woke up in that abandoned building, one day, one day is going to be E.T.'s day, but that day can't come if I give up today. So every single day when I woke up, I kept telling myself, today might not be the day, but soon it will be my day and I will recycle my pain. Say, so what do you mean, E.T., you recycled your pain? I turned homelessness into a book. I turned my father not being in my life to a book. I turned an estranged relationship with my mom into a book. I turned being homeless into a book. I turned being a high school dropout into a bestseller. And not only do they sell it in America, they sell it across the world. What will you do with your pain? Will you let it break you or will you let it redefine you? I outlasted the pain. to you, to the person who's feeling like there's no hope, that you can't see a way out of your current situation or circumstance. I want to say first that I'm sorry that you're going through whatever trial it is that you're going through right now. It's not fair and you don't deserve it. But there is hope on the other side of this trial. 
I want you to think about those feelings, those times where you felt happiness, where you felt joy, where you experienced love in a way that you never thought you'd be able to experience. And I want you to hold on to those moments and think about your future and think about having those moments of love and joy and laughter and peace again. And I want you to know that right now, it's just a trial. It's just a test. The things that seem to hurt you and make you feel like you can't put one step in front of the other, it's just something that's going to happen to make you stronger. You don't have to get from how you're feeling right now to immediate joy and laughter. It might take time. But all I'm asking you to do is put one foot in front of the other and grasp onto that hope with everything that you have and know that this too shall pass. I'm rooting for you. When you think about, you know, what you want out of life, where you want to make your mark, you have to start figuring out who you are. And so my first step is always to figure out who you are. Where can you be great? And when you do that, you have to put the blinders on. Don't look at anyone else because nobody else can tell you how to be you. So I dealt with homelessness and poverty growing up, domestic violence growing up in a home with a lot of drug abuse and alcoholism. But I had that vision of going to the Olympics and I had that, that skill of jumping. I put those two things together and it was really the thing that pulled me through those difficult times. And I think that when people have those difficult times, you have to have something that brings hope and joy and has the power to propel you through difficult situations because each and every one of us has them. But we have to be able to see outside of it and when we lose hope, that's when we feel like giving up. People are losing hope and they can't see beyond their current circumstances and they feel like, like their runway is too short. But um, I want to bring the fact that there is hope. There was a time period in my life where I decided that I didn't want to live anymore. And just to see all the amazing and beautiful things that were waiting for me in life on the other side of that moment. I want people that are living in their 20 year old devastation to know that there's life on the other side of it and to hold on to hope. The final three Olympics, every time you competed, you had just had a baby. What was that like? I mean, I, it blows my mind to even think about it. Uh, I, I love what that journey in life looks like and what it takes, but I can only imagine what it takes as an athlete. Can you walk us into what it was like for your body preparing after just giving, giving birth? So your body completely changed, changes after you have kids. Um, I remember after having my first child, my ankles were so weak and I needed to be able to put a tremendous amount of torque and force into the ground to be able to high jump. And I remember having to take it one step at a time. And I think that whenever we're at a certain level and for whatever reason we get knocked down, we just want to get back to that level so quickly. But we forget the process of being patient with ourselves and being very meticulous and strategic towards getting back towards where we want to go that we could injure ourselves or we put ourselves through a lot of mental anguish and so for me it was no different I wanted to put myself through that mental anguish and I had just jumped one of the best jumps in American history and yet now I'm struggling to jump a height that I cleared my freshman year of high school but I realized that I had to put one step in front of the other and I had to take it one day at a time and by being consistent, I eventually was able to jump higher and get to the point where I qualified for the Olympic trials and then I qualified for the Olympic Games. But I learned throughout that process. And a lot of people say hindsight is 2020 vision. And they say it in a negative way, like, oh, hindsight is 2020 vision. But it's the reality that you could take that 2020 vision, apply it to the next time and do it again without falling into the bear traps. And that's what I did from one Olympics to the next. I figured out a process that worked. Another saying that I love is that insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and over again and expecting a different result. 
but they also say that quote in a negative connotation. The reality is there's a positive aspect to it. If you're doing things right, you get amazing results. You put in that recipe time and time again, it'd be insanity to expect to get anything less than success. And so once I figured out what works, I keep doing it. My weight sheet is exactly the same as it was when I was in college. My, my training, I kept everything the same because I know it works. I'll get to it tomorrow. I'm like, who promised you that? Because light changes so quick. We live our lives and we feel as if we're promised something. We really don't have any control. We can control what we possess, emotions, attitude, thought process, perspective, how we speak, how we respond. But just life in general, we have no control of that. But it's so many parts of the injury that shaped my perspective. It was almost surreal. Your career's probably over. Uh, your arm and hand will probably never be the same again. Hey man, life don't owe you a thing. Everybody done been through something. Everybody's gonna encounter something. I think the beautiful thing about adversity and opposition, when you live with it, it teaches you. If you're open to it easiest thing in the world to do is to be negative. Easiest thing in the world to do is complain. Easiest thing in the world to do is to quit. That's easy. It's moments like that that you remember that shape and mold you as a person as you go throughout life. And I think we all have them, right? We all have these moments, right? Whether it be humility moments, whether it be, you know, moments that keep us grounded. It's just we choose sometimes to forget them. And for all of us, we're going to encounter those defining moments in our lives, right, to where it's going to hurt. It's always a lesson. It's always a blessing. It's up to us to extract it. Attitude drives performance. So that's the key to life. I think sometimes when things don't go our way, the quote says it. You judge the true character and caliber of a person not by where they stand in times of comfort and convenience. You judge the true character and caliber of a person by where they stand in times of challenge and controversy. But when things go wrong, things don't go the way you want them to, they don't unfold the way you want them to, who are you? Because that's the true test of who you are as a person. That's your true character. Everybody is going to smile when the sun's shining, man. But the song says it. Can you stand the rain, baby? Attitude is a small thing that we often underestimate, but we really can control that. I come into my junior year, and I'm about to get exactly what I want. About to get this thing called NFL. <laughs> 10 games away from this dream, this thing that I've been working for my whole life. My whole life is dedicated to this one game. I got the paperwork that states I'm about to be an NFL draft pick. NFL on top of the paper. Inky Johnson projected top 30 automatic multi-millionaire. Now all you have to do, the hard part's over. Just play the next 10 football games, Ink. You, you, you made it. And I go out in a silly game against Air Force, two minutes left and I go to make a tackle that I can make with my eyes closed. And when I hit him, every breath in my body left. My body goes completely limp. I fall to the ground, I blacked out, my eyes open. I'm still not, you know, too concerned, because it's football. When my eyes open, guys run over, Ink, let's rock, man, let's go, let's finish him off. And I'm like, I, I can't. I said, I can't move. Shot, neck to my toes, I can't feel anything. Shock leaves, it stays in my right arm and hand. I'm like, maybe I got a bad stinger. They put me on the spine board, willing me off the field. Doctor says to me as he's walking beside me, I don't know how you're still alive, son, you don't have any pulse. We get to the ambulance, my father's standing there. I'm like, Pops, I laid it on him, right? I put it on him, right? My dad's like, yeah, but I think you got the worst part of this for me. Doctor said, we're gonna take you over, run a couple tests, bring you back into the room, everything will be cool. 
They run the test, they bring me back into the room. Mom comes in, kisses, prays, son, you'll be fine. Doctors rush in, head boy says, hey ma'am, gotta rush him back to surgery, he's about to die. If we don't perform this surgery tonight, I guarantee you, you won't be here in the morning. And now the thing I placed my identity in, now it was gone. That's why I laugh at people when they say, man, if I could just get this, I'll be. Man, if I could just get this position, I'll be. Woo! Man, if I could just get this amount of money, I'll be. I'm like, woo. But what happens even if you get it or you don't get it? Like, do you have the ability to accept what you don't understand? Can you handle when things get off course? I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, like, man, I'm eight games away and God is redirecting me. And I'm like, God, just let me get to the NFL, then redirect me. Like, let me get the contract, then redirect me so I can help my family. And I thought it was over after football got redirected. My life got redirected two, three more times before I even fell into my purpose and my mission and what I was supposed to be doing. It got redirected two, three more times. I'm thinking I'm going to be a coach. Just like every guy when he finishes the game, and I'll just coach. But people keep coming to me, telling me, speak, Inky, you need to speak. And I'm like, I'm not speaking. Everybody got a story. That's how I view life. Everybody done been through something, right? Everybody's going to encounter something. And so I never looked at speaking, sharing. I never was the guy like, oh, man, this happened to me. Let me go share with the world. I was like, nah, Inky, figure it out. Like, pick up the pieces, move forward, and figure it out. And so when people would say this, I'd be like, nah, I'm not trying to speak. Like, I don't want to speak. The things we go through in life, man, they're not just for us, right? Once we get to a place of peace and we figure out mm -hmm. how to deal with it, it's our responsibility to go out and share that. Right. It's like not before the world all the time, but just to share it. Because other people go through things, right? Other people are fighting, just go out and share it. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time I had got hit with something to where I pondered it, right? To where I was like, make a nice, make a nice point. And uh, I was getting invitations to speak at the time, school assembly, uh -huh. you know. I got the same feeling that I was getting in the tunnel, right? And I'll never forget when I got it, I felt it and I captured it. I spoke, did well, got home, and I'll never forget thinking like, man, like, I might need to be more intentional about this. When we go through things in life, the first thing we try to do is understand it. I'm like, nah, man, some things you're gonna go through, it's gonna be so tough, you're not gonna understand it right away. Just survive it. And I always tell a story about when my faith was fortified and my life went to another level, was the only thing I had at that moment was a prayer and a book. I got up and I looked at my wife, I said, I'm going to take this book to open. And so I got my book, I got my suit, it's hot. Every door that opened, I ran in it. I'm, hey man, Inky Johnson, drove from Atlanta, they're like, get out of here. I'm like, man, over people, rude, man. I thought, you nice, you give away cars, like, you're rude. So after getting kicked out of like four doors, I go to the back of the building. I sit down, I put my back on the building, look up to the sky, and I'm like, God, man, thought it was you. Like, I'm like, man, my wife gonna chew me out, man. I get up, I look down the sidewalk, and at this moment, there was nobody but Oprah and a security guard. Talking about nobody else. She's walking toward me, I'm walking toward her. I get a couple of feet away, I stop. She grabbed my suit, said, hey, that's a nice suit. I said, thank you. I said, I drove from Atlanta, I wanted to get you my book. She said, oh, cool, great. I said, would well, you mind taking a picture? We take a picture. And I'm going to walk off. She said, I got to get in and do my show. I said, all right, thank you. And I'm going to walk off. And her security says to me, said, uh, hey, young man, come here. I stopped. I went back to him. He said, I just want to tell you something. He said, what just happened never happens. He said, now, I don't know what's going to come out of it. I don't know book club, show. I don't know about any of that. He said, but I just want to make sure I tell you what just happened never happened. Like, God, are we really moving to the point where I can get up in Atlanta, Georgia, look at my wife, don't know nobody in Chicago, don't know nobody on Oprah's staff, and look at my wife and say, I'm going to meet Oprah. I got a certain level of faith that I'm going to meet Oprah. Like, at a certain point, like, what is it really about? 
Like, and I know the initial reaction when we go through things is to say, man, why did this have to happen to me? And it's an honest reaction. Because sometimes good people go through some crazy stuff. At a certain point, you're going to hit something that's going to test that level of faith. And my definition of commitment was always staying true to what I said I would do long after the mood that I've set it in has left. Like, am I going to stay true to my beliefs and my core and my essence of who I am as an individual, even if I get a paralyzed right arm and hand? Am I going to stay true to it, even if my little career that I thought I was going to have disappears? Am I going to stay true to it, even if one day I'm in a football game, the thing I love to do, the thing I have been practicing my whole life, and in one moment it gets wiped out? Am I going to stay true to it? Somebody comes up to me almost every week and say, like, be honest, like, you said you wouldn't change what happened to you. Why? I got a paralyzed right on my hand. But who I am as a man, that never got paralyzed. Can I condition my mindset and my perspective that when uncertainty happens, opposition happens, adversity happens, I can put my mind, my perspective in a space and place to extract some good. Stop trying to understand it and focus on surviving it. You may be average, you may be ordinary, but you have the opportunity every single day to make extraordinary decisions. And what you do today will determine your future. The future is very expensive. The currency to get to the future, the bridge that we build, it is built on your daily decisions, your habits, your programming, the way that you think, the way that you talk, the way that you walk, blood, sweat, tears, sacrifice, people that you have to let go, sleep that you have to lose, multiple jobs that you have to work, hours on end of study, beating on your craft every single day. It's not easy, but it's worth it. There are going to be nights you're going to cry yourself to sleep. There are going to be times you're going to want to throw in the towel. But if you keep going, your future self will thank you. If you can hear your future self talking to you now, the future you would say thank you for not giving up. Thank you for not throwing in the towel. Thank you for not allowing the despair and the anguish and the anger and the bitterness and the jealousy and the ego to eat away at your progress and your perseverance and your ability to travail and endure. I believe in the future, number one. You gotta get crystal clear about who you believe you've been destined to be. Because everybody's looking to manifest. We are all looking to evolve. We are all looking to level up. What is your life's purpose? What is your destiny? Why on earth are you here? What is it that you can do today to get closer to the fulfillment of that future? To get closer to the manifestation of the future? What are you doing today? What are you giving today? Remember why you had to let some people go. Remember why you're working so hard towards this thing. You're pressing, you're pushing, you're clawing, you're dragging yourself through mud and through murky water. Come on, remember why you're doing what you're doing. It may be difficult. It may seem impossible. The moment that you discover why you're here, spend the rest of your life Execute. There are going to be times when you give everything you have. And everything that you have is not enough. Push through the pain. Push through the anguish. Push through the brokenness. Do not stop. It's the no quit mentality. Wherever you are now is not where you're going to end up. You are special, and you've been designed to change the world. So many of us want so many different things, and our life is filled with entertainment and recreation. 
and people that we have not appraised? Have you appraised your connections? Have you done a scrupulous evaluation of everyone in your life? Are they assets or are they liabilities? Yes, you want the future, but what's your plan? And then the moment that you create the plan and you've ironed out all the kinks and you're crystal clear and you've got this plan, you've got this aim, this target, then you gotta stay committed. With tears in your eyes, you gotta be committed when your brain is hurting. You gotta be committed when you haven't gotten sleep in a few days. You gotta be committed. You gotta plow through that depression, that heaviness, that weariness, and you gotta cling to the joy of the thought of the future that if you finish this course, then there is a reward at the end of this pain. You may feel as though you are not able to breathe now. You may be inundated with responsibility and it seems as though there is no way out of this. You have to be grateful for the ground that you've gained and guard the ground that you've gained. Celebrate the small wins. If we keep looking at the big picture, if we keep looking at the end game, if that's all we fix our eyes on, then we'll get off kilter, we'll lose our footing, and we'll walk around discouraged because you're not gonna just wake up in one day and fulfill destiny. It's the process that's perfecting us. It's the ins and the outs and the nuances. It's the song and the dance between destiny and the journey and the process and the promise. And we've got to learn how to execute the day. Give us this day. We've got to learn how to execute the day. Did you conquer the day? I'm not where I'm supposed to be, but I'm not where I used to be. And so we've got to celebrate the small wins, those mental wins, those emotional wins, those relational wins, those financial wins, those spiritual wins. We've got, we've got to celebrate, celebrate. And then we've got to be kind, not only to others throughout our process, but we've got to be kind to ourselves. The problem with many of us is that we're not kind to ourselves. Be kind to yourself. You can be assertive, you can be direct, you can be firm, but you can have a little empathy and a little kindness, not only on others, but on yourself. Because the truth of the matter is, you are not going to always feel like doing what you were designed to do, okay? And so we've gotta condition ourselves for the stretch. With gratitude, we're gonna need that coupled with patience. The future takes time to manifest. The future takes time because you are beautifully equipped to get the results you are currently getting and there are some bigger results that you are after and in order to get those results, in order to manifest that very specific future, you're going to have to acquire a different set of skills, a different work mentality. It's going to require you to become a different version of yourself. Elevation is all over you. Okay, next, you gotta seize the opportunity. There are so many opportunities for you to grow, so many opportunities for you to learn, so many opportunities for you to share, for you to give, for you to understand, for you to think, for you to be quiet, for you to speak. And you've gotta know when to do, what to do, why to do. This is the paradigm of the future. The future has a specific paradigm that you have to execute, you have to walk in this. You're going to have to move from limited beliefs and you're gonna to have to move into limitless believing. You have to know your boundaries, establish your guardrails. You gotta know your weaknesses and your strengths. Do not stop! It's the no quit mentality! Listen up! Yes, I'm talking to you! If you can hear my voice, You've got work to do! This is something you all need to understand. If you want to be the best in whatever you do, you got to start acting different than everybody else. You don't have to compare yourself to anyone because you have the ability to create the life you want. You've been put in a position where you ultimately doubted yourself. You started to believe you don't belong here. You're not that good. 
You don't fit the criteria on what the rest of the world is looking for. I didn't want to be like everybody else. I wanted to be the fucking best at everything I did. And I did. Do you realize how difficult it is to be different? Different. Winning requires discipline. Commit to making things happen. You've got a destiny to fulfill. You've got a purpose to walk into. You've got dots to connect. I want to be remembered forever. And in order for that to happen, I realized I needed to fucking act like it. So don't just talk about what you want to happen. Be an action taker and recognize that you don't have to be jealous of anyone. We all want to do something. We all want to be somebody. We all want to go somewhere. You can't be doing the same shit that everybody else is doing if you want to be the best. You achieve your goals only when you are disciplined enough to keep showing up when you don't feel like it. The best of everything comes with a fucking price. Success stories have a humble beginning. You can't push yourself forward if all you're thinking about is the doubts and the negative things that people are saying. Because you're relying more on their ideas and their dreams of you instead of you relying on your own dreams and ideas of yourself. Why would you want to surround yourself with people that don't have ideas that are great? Why would you want to surround yourself because of a number? You know, a lot of people tend to wonder, oh, how many friends they have and how many people in their corner? Oh, I have a million followers. I have tens and thousands and thousands and thousands of people that support me. How many of those people do you actually know? Do you realize the power that you have right now? Even the people that don't like you, they are drawn to you. They see you, but they don't see your greatness. They don't see what you truly have inside. They are afraid of it. They don't lift it up. They don't encourage it because they're not happy. So they want you to come on their side. They want you to believe in their ideas of what you think of yourself. They doubt you and you believe what they doubt. Instead of you waking up from your slumber, Instead of you waking up from this nightmare of despair and letting your opportunities come to life. It's going to be a tough time, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be rough. It's going to be some tough times and tough days ahead for you. But that doesn't mean your ideas are going to die. That doesn't mean that you stop. It doesn't mean you stop believing in yourself. You just got to keep on working. When you got people looking at you from the left side and the right side, from the front to the back, and you in the middle, <laughs> just remember, everybody's watching. Just give them something to see. Let them see it. Are oh, you watching me? <laughs> Watch this. Are oh, you want to stop me? You can't stop this. That's the mentality that you must have in yourself. Don't you dare give up now. I know what that pain feels like. I know how to absorb that pain. And I know how to keep marching. And I know how to keep moving. And I know how to get productive in my life. Can't stop what you didn't create. You can hate it, but you can't dominate it because it belongs to me. Your ideas belongs to you. So many people dream big dreams, but they never take any action. So listen to me carefully. If you don't believe in yourself, you've already lost the battle. Not believing in yourself is a losing battle because either you won't try at all or you will convince yourself that you can't do it. 
And when you convince yourself that you can't do it, your results are going to confirm what you believe. You fall short of your goals when you predict that you're not going to hit them. And sometimes you're too focused on probability. You're asking yourself, well, what's the likelihood of this happening? Versus focusing on the possibility. Asking yourself, how would my life change if I accomplished this? Ask yourself that question. And don't wait on approval from anyone outside of you. And don't feel bad because you feel like no one is cheering for you. No, you've got to decide that you are your biggest fan. You've got to decide that you're going to finish what you started if you don't have one person supporting you. If nobody acknowledges you, acknowledge yourself. If nobody supports you, support yourself. This is the thing. If you keep showing up, if you keep going hard, if you stay consistent through your valley moments, your results will turn those who ignored you into fans. It's not that you don't want everything that comes with the path that leads to your true potential, but you are too hung up on blaming the past and the present. You are too hung up on blaming your mom for how she treated you when you were younger. You are too hung up on blaming your teachers for how they spoke to you. You're too hung up on the shitty thing that happened to you years ago. I'm not trying to discredit your pain, but you gotta let that go. And because of that, you aren't able to appreciate the strength and power you have today. You aren't able to step into that power because you are choosing to justify excuses every single time you open your fucking eyes. It's time to take responsibility. Understand that you are in control of how you feel every day, what you do every day, how you act every day. So don't get it twisted. The excuse that these outside sources control how you feel, what you do and how you act is just a justification that has been drilled into your head since you were younger. Break out of it. Understand that we have the power to change our lives. Stop putting the power in other people's hands by blaming them for your current situation. Take that shit back. Take that shit back. Choose to shift the trajectory of your life so you can live up to your true potential. And don't for one second think it's going to be easy. If it's important to you, you're going to find a way. You won't have to look for a resource. You will become resourceful. It's not always about the accomplishment. It's about the effort. If we can just keep the effort going, the excuse is irrelevant. You got to be stronger than your excuses. Excuses don't get results. We get one opportunity to come this way. We get one shot. We got one life to live. Life is too short to make excuses. You're pushing and you're pushing and you're pushing and you're pushing and you're doing everything right. You're tired, you're exhausted and ain't nothing happening yet. That word is what you're waiting for. Yet. It's no different because we've messed up, because you fell off the wagon, you've been on alcohol and drugs, and you gave up on life, and you dropped out, or you've been to jail one time, two times, three times, and you really want your dream to happen, and you're putting in your work, and nothing's happening yet. I promise you, if you keep pushing, if you keep giving me all your effort, it will happen. It must happen. It can't do anything but move. You can do anything but make progress. But I want you all to understand in saying that word that you all, you all have to stop getting caught up in movement as progress. For some of us, the action of making progress is progress. 
the, the push itself, the fight. You get up and swing and miss, that's progress. You get up and you run at, at what you want with everything you got and you miss, that's progress. The effort of making the attempt is progress. And so guess what? The goals and the dreams are in that mindset to do nothing. I'll get to it tomorrow. I'll do it the next day. I'll do it the day after that. We're in a mindset of quitting. And if you want to make sure you become successful, it's not will you quit, it's will you stop preparing to quit. You got to give up on saying, look, I can do that tomorrow. Look, this is my time for rest. This is my time for break. There is no quit. Guess what? Dreams don't stop people do and then you have the nerve to think or to ask yourself why you're not successful and you see it happen every day on Monday morning somebody's gonna get up and they gonna hand in their resignation going to a new job on Monday morning somebody gonna get up lifting more than you on Monday morning somebody gonna get up running faster than you on Monday morning somebody gonna get up with their name higher than the draft than you on Monday morning somebody's gonna be getting that scholarship that you could have got guess what on Monday morning somebody's gonna get up whistling to take that test while you worry why there's no difference between them and you they're not faster, they're not smarter, they're not stronger, they're not better. They just don't quit. You give up. You give up. You believe that 24 hours, that 48 hours, you deserve to be off. You deserve to relax. Why you relax and always remember this though. It's somebody grinding. It's somebody pushing harder than you. It's somebody giving up more than you. Guess what? Until you get in that mental mindset that you will not prepare to quit, you will never succeed. Because if you prepare to quit, quitting is inevitable. I'm going to have the same amount of time, the same advantage, no excuse. They're not going to have an hour more than me. They're not going to have six hours extra than me. I'm going to grind just as long and I'm I'm gonna grind longer and I'm gonna prepare myself to be successful. Why? One reason. I don't quit. I don't prepare myself in the mindset to quit. And if you don't understand this right now, that you're gonna have to push harder, you're gonna have to fight longer, you're gonna have to give in with everything you got, you're gonna have to give up more, you're gonna have to not be lazy, you're gonna have to not listen to that old you. You're gonna have to believe that this extra time I can use on the weekend or at the end of the day or at night when other people are sleeping or when everybody's at the family reunion, when other people are on vacation at the beach, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna get it, and I'm gonna make my dreams a reality. Nobody gonna stop me but me. That's the only person that can. Understand, if you want to make your dreams a reality, you've gotta understand that you can't quit. you have a timeline for when you want your dream to become a reality that don't mean your dream listen to you baby I'm not coach right now I'm your conscience you're, you're in a fight between will and skill I say will first because that's where you are you locked and loaded with skill you practicing every day, you putting in your work, you buying everything, you making the investment, you living your dream, you walking like your dream, you surrounding yourself around your dream, you got mentors, everything, you putting your work in, you got your skill, now it's a test of your will. It's a mindset thing you in right now, it's a mindset thing, because your challenge your challenge ain't moving. Your mountain is not moving. You don't feel like you're making any progress. You're not physically moving when you see everything else around you and other people around you moving. You're not making progress. You're in the test of your will right now because life says it has a little more test for you. You can look at your challenge with skill and it will see it just as that a challenge or you can look at your challenge with will and see it as much understand this and listen to me clearly you may forget this face you may forget this voice you may forget who told you but get your pads out don't ever forget these words that I'm about to tell you if you want to be great in this life you only have one choice gentlemen you only have one choice you can make choices that just get you remembered or you can make choices that ultimately make you a legend. If you put as much time into working on winning as you put into thinking about losing, you'd already be a champion. 
when we gonna get tired of just knowing and seeing successful people and become one of them? Time is out to, to sit up here and just make these average decisions. To be make these irrelevant decisions that don't change you, don't change your family, don't change society, don't change your environment, don't change the world. It's time to make decisions that make you a legend. We see it every day. But the only difference, baby, you gonna make a choice to just be remembered, or you gonna make a choice to become a legend. You got to stop quitting. We got to stop giving up. All this TGIF, TGIF. It is now TGIA. Thank God I'm alive. When we open our eyes and we're in our right mind, we live as though we really appreciate that opportunity. And every time I see a post, every time I see a tweet or, or just anything, I want to ask the person, why are you thanking God it's Friday? Hello, newsflash. Tomorrow is Saturday. The day after that is Sunday. The day after that is Monday. What are you thanking God is Friday for? Because you're preparing to quit. You're preparing to stop what you're doing. You're prepared to clock out. You're prepared to go home. And you're in the mental mindset to do nothing. I dare you to get prepared for the, the challenges of your life by, by getting rid of comfort. I dare you. I dare you that when you find that job, that, that if you don't have a ride to work that you want, and then when you get there, you take the stairs. I dare you not to take a break, baby. I dare you to work through your lunch. I dare you that when it's hot, that you work faster. When it's cold, you work longer. I dare you to learn something new today that you didn't know yesterday. I dare you to. I dare you to run past that challenge. I dare you to face adversity. I dare you to look at it and say, look, I'm more than this right now. I can handle it. I dare you to look at your obstacles like right a mountain. I dare you to stop running from it. I dare you to, to stop throwing away food because you scared you're going to eat it at night. I dare you to stop taking the detour because it's a crack house on the corner and it's a liquor store on the street. I dare you to stop running from your addiction. I dare you to stop running from the old you and become the man you know you can become. Mountains aren't going to move. You got to climb that bad boy, baby. You cannot get what you want in your life by being comfortable. Comfort is failing us. Many of you are denied your dream and your goal because you have a consistency versus an intensity problem. Consistency is when you do something. Intensity is how you do something. And that's why many of you, no matter what you do, no matter how much you do it, no matter who you're looking at, no matter what you read, you're going to be denied because you think that just being consistent at something is going to let you win. That just that earns you the right to win. That I'm being denied that corner office. I, I'm being denied that car. I'm being denied this quality of life. I'm being denied that opportunity, this scholarship. I keep getting cut on, off the team. You know, I, if I just stay, if I just keep practicing and I just stay around this team, sooner or later I'll make it. No, you won't. No, you won't, because consistency does not guarantee you the win. Many of you, as, as bad as you don't want to accept this, you're never going to win, because you're not intense enough. And until you get intense to the point that nothing, nothing will get in your way, that you will not get in your way, you'll never win. You will have to become someone you've never been before. You want to go somewhere you've never gone? You got to do something you've never done. You got to say something you've never said. You got to go to a place in you that you've never even been. You get to redesign. You are your Michelangelo. You are your greatest sculpture. And you get to recarve and you get to up level as much as you need. You're not sentenced to this life this way. You chose it. You get to choose as much as you want. You get to design it any way you choose. You're not sentenced to your future. You have an opportunity to your future. What do you want and how do you want it? And if it doesn't make you a little afraid, then you ain't playing big enough. Your knees are supposed to knock a little bit. Your teeth are supposed to chatter a little bit. There's supposed to be at least two butterflies in your stomach. At least. 
Because if not, you're playing inside your comfort zone. And we mistake the fact that we're supposed to be comfortable 24-7. Well, let me tell you something. Comfortable is equivalent to complacent. I'll choose inconvenience every day, any day, to make a difference on the planet. I don't mind being mildly to moderately to significantly inconvenienced to leave my fingerprint on this planet. So I just came to talk to the game changers and to the change agents who are willing to confront any part of you that's not speaking to your madly, wildly amazing future. I stand here in my greatness. I own my light. I own my brilliance. I am bold. I am courageous. In my imperfection. This is my time. This is my time. I'm bright enough. I'm old enough. I'm young enough. I've experienced enough. I'm wise enough. I understand that I am enough. Breathe, own it, own it. Ask yourself, what's my dream? What's my dream? I came to challenge you to play in the biggest field you've ever played in. I came for you to challenge the fear that might be inside of you and to redesign and reprogram it. You look at it long enough, you be with it intimately enough, and it has to dissipate. You are the designer of your destiny. You are the author of your autobiography. You write the story of your life. No one can write your financial story. No one can write your spiritual story. No one can write your emotional story but you. The pen has always been in your hand. The pen has always been in your hand. I say write a story that's gonna be damn good to read. And ask yourself, what's my dream? What are you willing to do that you've never done before? What are you willing to say that you've never said before? Are you willing? Are you willing to do that thing you've never done before? Are you willing to stand at the edge of your own greatness? Are you willing to look at your fears? Are you willing to recognize that you can be afraid? Are you willing to look at the fact that there is always healing to come? There's always growth to come. There's no arrival. Are you willing? And then in the space of that, are you still willing to lean to the edge? Feel the breeze of possibility, not knowing if you will fly or fall. Are you willing? Are you willing to not quite know what's there, but that something is there is greater than you? Are you willing to say, my life has to make a huge You've heard me say this before, that there's a birthday and a transition day, and in between that is all the opportunity in the world. That's that dash, that dash that says, are you willing to disrupt my life? You're not here, you're not put here to leave my life calm. You're here to be a disruption for my life. You're here to cause me to want to be someone I've never been, do something I've never done because you crossed my path. Are you willing to show me that right It's going to cost you more time than you thought you'd have. It's going to cost you way more money than you thought you would invest. It's going to cost you some friends who couldn't make the entire journey with you. It's going to cost you that, that sense of, oh my God, I got to leave, I got to die to the old me to allow the new me to be born to my future. It's going to cost you something. 
This is the year for reset. This is the year for restart. This is the year for reignite. This is the year for repeat the things that you love. This is the year for recommit. This is the year for redesign. This is the year for re-engage. This is the year for restart. This is that year. I stopped by to ignite your fire. I stopped by to have you confront fear. I stopped by to have you look at what it's cost you and to make a bold declaration the next time it rises up, you rise up a little bit higher than it. I stopped by for you to no longer make fear your enemy. Make fear your fuel. I stopped by to redefine fear. To redefine it. Because fear is an emotion like any other emotion. Fear is an emotion like love, like compassion. Fear is an emotion, we just gave it more power. Mm. We just gave it more power. Compassion, oh, that's nice. Fear, ooh. We made, we gave it a meaning. And some of you know you've heard this before, that fear is false evidence appearing real. Now it's time to literally biohack the impact that fear has had on you. That fear no longer becomes your fortress, fear becomes your fuel. Fear is that thing that pushes you forward. Fear is the thing that reminds you, oh, I need to go get more information. Oh, fear will keep you up at night studying. Fear will take you to a coach or a mentor. Fear will cause you to eat a slice of humble pie. Repeat after me. I am ready for my next best season because I know that I am the author of my autobiography. I am the designer of my own destiny. I am writing my life story and I'm writing a life story that I'm going to love reading will be inspired by on one page they'll read my fear and on the next page they'll know I did it anyway I commit to hold fear in one hand and passion in the other and leap and leap and leap every time every time I ask that each of you, each of you hold, me hold me accountable to my contribution on this planet. My contribution on this planet. Turn to someone and say, don't let me off the hook. Strength, leadership, power, authority, guidance, patience, are God's gift to us as men. We have to cherish that, not abuse it. I prayed this morning to be a better listener. It didn't work so well. <laughs> it's we're human. You get back up. Yes, I've been high up on the mountain. I've been blessed, but that's a slippery slope. Yeah. And it's lonely up there. Yeah. You know, people don't know that side. We did not come this far to just break down and lose now. I'm a winner. I'm going to win. True desire in the heart, that itch that you have, whatever it is you want to do, that thing that you want to do to help others and to, to grow and to make money, that desire, that itch, that's God's proof to you. Sit beforehand already to indicate that it's yours. Aspire to make a difference. So you are what you are in this world. It's either one or two things. Either you're somebody, or you're nobody. Never give up. Without commitment, You'll never start, but more importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. It's not easy. If it were easy, there'd be no Denzel Washington. So, keep working, 
Keep striving, never give up, fall down seven times, get up eight. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. So keep moving, keep growing, keep learning. See you at work. While it may be frightening, it will also be rewarding. So you got to get out there. You got to give it everything you got, whether it's your time, your talent, your prayers, or your treasures. Because taking risk is not just about going for a job. It's also about knowing what you know and what you don't know. It's about being open to people and to ideas. To get something you never had, you have to do something you never did. Because the chances you take, the people you meet, the people you love, the faith that you have, that's what's going to define you. I found that nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take risks. Nothing. Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Now, I'm sure in your experiences in school and applying to college and picking your major and deciding what you want to do with life, I'm sure people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. But I never understood that concept having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything. I want to fall forward. I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. Fall forward. This is what I mean. Reggie Jackson struck out 2,600 times in his career, the most in the history of baseball. But you don't hear about the strikeouts. People remember the home runs. Fall forward. Thomas Edison conducted 1,000 failed experiments. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Because the 1,001st was the light bulb. Fall forward. Fail big. Today's the beginning of the rest of your life, and it can, be, it can be very frightening. It's a new world out there, it's a mean world out there, and you only live once. So do what you feel passionate about. Take chances, professionally. Don't be afraid to go outside the box. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. Don't be afraid to fail big, to dream big, but remember, Dreams without goals are just dreams and they ultimately fuel disappointment. So have dreams, but have goals, life goals, yearly goals, monthly goals, daily goals. I try to give myself a goal every day. Sometimes it's just to not curse somebody out. <laughs> Simple goals, but have goals. And understand that to achieve these goals, you must apply discipline and consistency. In order to achieve your goals, you must apply discipline, which you have already done, and consistency every day, not just on Tuesday and this a few days. You have to work at it. Hard work works you'll never see a u-haul behind a hearse i don't care how much money you make you can't take it with you the egyptians tried it they got robbed that's all they got you can't take it with you and it's not how much you have it's what you do with what you have we all have different talents. Some of you will be doctors, some lawyers, some scientists, some educators, some nurses, some preachers. The most selfish thing you can do in this world is help someone else. Why is it selfish? Because the gratification, the goodness that comes to you, the good feeling, the good feeling that I get 
from helping others. Nothing's better than that. Well, one or two things, but nothing's better than that. Not, not jewelry, not big house I have, not the cars, but the, the, it's the joy. That's where the joy is in helping others. That's where the success is. And anything you want good, you can have. So claim it. Work hard to get it. When you get it, reach back. Pull someone else up. Each one, teach one. Remember, just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Remember that. Just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Don't confuse movement with progress. My mother told me, she said, yeah, because you can run in place all the time and never get anywhere. So continue to strive, continue to have goals, continue to progress. At some point in life, you will lose your balance and fall for the first time. Get back up and try again. At some point in life, you will fall for the second time. Get back up and try again. At some point in life, you will fall for the third time, fall for the fourth time. Get back up and try again. Falling one time is not a failure. It's the start of your journey. The pain of failing is temporary. It will not last. No matter how many times you get knocked down, you get up again. Get knocked down for the fifth time. Get back up and try again. There are no quick fixes in life. Anything of real worth will take struggle and perseverance. Success is a journey. What is most important, that one simply does their absolute best and remains persistent. We learn little from victory. Much more from defeat. Stay focused. Even if you fall 1,000 times, you just keep getting up and trying again and again and again. Your start does not determine how you're going to finish. Every day is a new opportunity to reach that goal, to reach that dream. Success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love of yourself and love what you are aiming to achieve. The difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little extra. That little extra day. I fall down six times, I get up and try again. I fall down seven times, I get up and try again. We all start standing, standing on our own two feet. Standing for what we believe in, standing for what is right, standing for our loved ones, and standing for those who can't stand themselves, even if it means standing alone. Keep your head up, and keep your feet on the ground, because your life is dependent on it. And whatever you want to accomplish, you must empty your heart and your soul into it. You must believe when others say you cannot. You must go when your heart is telling you to stop. You must rise. and become legendary. You just keep getting up and trying again and again and again. Fall down seven, stand up eight.